हॅलो एलिवन आवाज येतोय का येतो लास्ट टाइम वॉट आर दिवायसेस वॉट इज मीन बाय कॉम्प्युटर फर्स्ट थिंग वॉट इज मीन बाय कॉम्प्युटर हु इन्व्हेंटेड द कम्प्युटर आफ्टर दॅट वॉट इज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉम्प्युटर and how the computer was evolved how the evolution of computer took place from uh, mark 1 computer or charles babbage reference engine to the modern computer we have also seen the five generations of computers first five first generation second generation third generation fourth and fifth generation difference between these five generations computer is derived uh, from the word compute compute means to calculate compute means to calculate something so the definition of computer just look at this a computer is an electronic device it is an electronic device that can perform activities that involve mathematical logical and graphical manipulation so it can perform mathematical operations or manipulations like plus minus division multiplication it can also perform all the statistical functions it can perform logical functions boolean operations and it can also perform graphical manipulations so it can uh, show you the graphs show you the videos also not just graph it can also show the videos also videos pictures all the motion pictures it can show on the screen so the f- operation of computer is uh, performs on the three sequences first sequence it receives the data it receives the data and instructions from the input device from the input device so what uh, different input devices we had seen uh gore aditya what are the different input devices we had seen in the last lecture input devices keyboard mouse 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 keyboard okay uh scanner okay. mouse keyboard scanner microphone all these are input devices so it receives the data and instructions from the input devices which we are using after that second it processes the data as per the instructions what instructions you gave it processes the data as per the instructions and third it provides the result it provides the result in the desired form suppose i type k on the keyboard suppose i type k on the keyboard so k is inputted by the keyboard k is inputted by the keyboard after that it goes to the cpu after that it goes to the cpu and after that it is displayed as k on the screen that is monitor so this is the simple process it doesn't happen like that but it is a simple process that i have explained suppose i type k on the keyboard it goes to first it goes to cpu and after that it is displayed on the screen so these are the three sequence of operations that are performed by the computer so advantage is you all know the speed of computer is very high it can perform millions of uh, operations in second one second so it is very high speed after that the accuracy of the computer is high it does not make any mistakes as compared to humans so accuracy is very high after that the storage of computer is also very high it can store a large amount of digital data it can store a large amount of digital data next 
it is uh, it enables the automation process that means we can program the computer such a way that it can perform all the tasks automatically we don't have uh, need to have human interference into that the fourth point is automation fifth point is diligence diligence means it can perform same task repeatedly without any mistake or any uh, any hindrance so it can perform same task repeatedly humans can't perform same task repeatedly because they get tired of that same task but computer doesn't get tired of that same task it can perform the same task repeatedly without loss of accuracy without any mistake it can perform same task sixth is the versatility versatility means it can perform simple task also and it can perform very complex task also that is called as versatility some humans can perform simple task only some humans can perform complex task only but it has computer has in uh, versatility high versatility as compared to humans and seventh cost effectiveness we are using the computer uh, we eliminate a lot of paper work because the data stored is in digital form your exams mid exams also were taken in digital form no paper work was involved so it uh, it is cost effective it saves a lot of cost as compared to the recent paper work next is the limitations of computer now there are some limitations of computers also first is computers need clear and complete instructions to perform a task accurately so half instructions or wrong instructions can give wrong results suppose i type k and i uh, wanted to type n but i type k so it will display k only not n if you cannot read your mind it only uh, processes the instructions that are given to you it cannot read the mind so you have to give clear and complete instructions to perform so first limitation is it needs clear and complete instructions to perform second computers cannot think they don't have thinking capacity they only compute they only calculate so they don't think as as like humans third computers cannot learn by experience suppose computer made a mistake at uh, by uh, at one time as you have made the mistake by one time but it can't uh, repeat the it can repeat the same mistake because you have given the same uh, task okay so it cannot learn by experience like the human if you have made mistake one time you can learn by that mistake and avoid doing that mistake second time but computers cannot avoid doing the mistake or computers cannot learn by experience this is the anatomy of a computer this is the anatomy of computer this is how the uh, blocks central blocks look like so first the data data uh, goes through or comes through the input device input device like keyboard mouse microphone or scanner all these are input device so the data is given through an input device okay after that this data is passes through the central processing unit this data passes through the central processing unit which constitutes these three blocks first is the memory unit first is the memory unit second is the arithmetic and logical unit and third is the control unit third is the control unit these three units process the data that is given by the input device these three units process the data given by the input device and this data goes to the output device in digital form this data goes to the output device in digital form this output device is plays or plays or uh, the sounds like the uh, output device is a speaker so it plays the sound as an output whatever the output input you give it will uh, display the output with the help of the output device so this is the anatomy of computer anatomy means the basic structure of the computer so there are three 
units one is input de input device second is the cpu or central processing unit and third is the output device next next is the anatomy of computer next is the anatomy of computer so again just a detailed view this one is monitor number 1 number 2 it is a modem modem is used for internet number 3 is the cpu or the system unit number 4 this is mouse we have already done this in the previous lecture number 5 is speaker number 5 is speaker number 6 is printer and number 7 is keyboard so this is the detailed version of computer okay again if we go in detail we can look at these parts there is a power supply graphics cards sound cards network cards back usb connector ram you can see here these are the internal devices of the computer inside the motherboard so modem router cpu full motherboard heat sink assembly for overheating front usb and audio connectors and all these peripherals monitor keyboard and mouse so this is a detailed version of computer inside next we'll look at this anatomy which we had seen in this input device cpu and output device inside cpu memory unit and al unit and control unit so we'll go through this one by one so first is the input device so it reads the information from the input media whatever whatever the input media is there it reads the information and enters into the computer in a coded form coded form means the computer requires the binary numbers or digital language so it requires a uh, data to be entered in binary form so it converts the input media and enters the computer in a coded form that is the function of input device example first keyboard second mouse and third scanner this is mouse and this is scanner okay so function you have to remember it reads information from input media and enters into the computer in a coded form that is the function of input device second is the central processing unit or cpu as we all know it is the brain of the computer it is known as brain of the computer and it consists of three units first is memory unit second is alu and third is control unit so we will see function memory unit it stores the program and data it stores the program whatever programs or whatever softwares we used like microsoft office paint even music player even uh, some play pubg also okay all this data are stored in the memory unit all these data are stored in the memory unit for storage purpose next arithmetic and logical unit so it performs this unit performs arithmetic functions arithmetic means the addition subtraction multiplication these are simple functions but uh, different are also there like statistical functions are also there okay and logical functions logical functions means uh, disc, uh, male or female description male or female uh, distinguish again true or false all these are logical functions okay and third is the control unit third is the control unit which controls the input and output device this control unit controls the input and output device and ensures that all these are working properly and in sequence so instructions 
and instructions are gone through the sequence whatever the sequence you are given the same sequence is followed or not so it is controlled by the control unit next the output device function is decoding of information and presenting it to the user decoding of the information and presenting it to the user that is the function of the output device so it decodes the information from binary to again your language okay, and presents it to the user it may pre it may be presented through a monitor or it may be played through a speaker or it may be in print format printed format so any of these can be used as a output device next the cpu cpu consists of these three units we all have seen so first memory unit which is also known as primary memory or main memory so primary memory or main memory it is different uh, hard disk is different it is not a memory unit the hard disk which you use is different it is not under a memory unit so the function of memory unit is storing data program instructions internal results and final output temporarily before it is sent to an output device so it stores the data program instructions whatever the applications you use these instructions or these data are stored in the memory unit after that it stores results internal results whatever output is uh, you get it is also stored in the memory unit until the output device is it is reached that is the function of memory unit it consists of storage locations different storage locations and these are called as cells so it is not a pathology lecture it is memory memory cells these are called as memory cells so these consist of thousand of cells called storage locations it is our uh, character this character either a letter or numerical digit is stored as a string of 0 and 1 that is binary number so a character is stored as a binary number also a number is also stored as a binary number into the memory unit so suppose if i type a the letter a it is stored as a binary number 10101 like this in the memory okay it is not stored as a it is stored as a binary number 101011 like this okay so this is the function of memory unit second is the arithmetic and logical unit it is a unit where all arithmetic operations and logical functions such as true or false male and female are performed so this is the thinking unit or mathematical operation unit so once the data are fed into the main memory they are held and transferred to the alv where the actual processing takes place actual mathematical operations are performed in this unit third is the control unit it acts as a central nervous system and ensures that the information is stored correctly so it ensures that the information is stored in a correct storage location and in a correct format and the program instructions that you give are followed in a proper sequence as well as the data are selected from the memory as necessary each data which it should select which is also controlled by control unit next it also coordinates all the input and the output device of it so it also coordinates whether all the input device and output device are working in a proper format or not next hardware hardware as well know the physical components of the computer which we can touch which we can physically touch and see are called as hardware these are the physical components of the computer which we are which you can touch and see these are called as hardware so example all the input and output devices which we all know all the processors circuits and the cables all these are included in the hardware next software 
जैसे कि सॉफ्टवेयर इज अ प्रोग्राम सॉफ्टवेयर इज अ प्रोग्राम और सेट ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट कॉजेस द हार्डवेयर टू फंक्शन इन अ डिजायर्ड वे इट इज नॉट अ हार्डवेयर टाइप वी कैंट टच द सॉफ्टवेयर इट इज अ सेट ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट कॉजेस द हार्डवेयर टू फंक्शन इन अ डिजायर्ड वे ओके इफ सपोज आई वॉट अ कॉम्प्यूटर और अ लैपटॉप एंड I did not install the uh, Windows CD. I did not install the Windows. So without Windows, the uh, computer or laptop will not work. That is why without software, your hardware is useless. Unless the software is installed, the hardware cannot run. Okay, that is the main function of software. So there are uh, two. categories one is system software and another is application software so one is system software which includes all the operating systems all the different operating systems and the application software which involves the normal applications we use day to in our day to day life like microsoft office paint notepad text text pad all these applications general purpose applications and special softwares are included in application software the system software are used where the system is required to run that is called as system software the system software is made for system and application software is made for the user that is the main difference so the system software is used by system only or used for the working of system only and application software is used for the uh, service of our user okay that is the difference of system software and application software so first you will see the system software so it includes first operating system as we all know what are the different types of operating systems can you anybody tell me focatic operating systems tell me different types uh, different examples of operating system MS Office. MS Office. Nine. Mute kara. Hmm. C Venala. Hey kya? C Venala. Tell me different examples of operating system. tell me different examples of operating system c venala hello tell me different examples of operating system microsoft windows one example which we use uh, today operating system uh, is microsoft windows windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 all these are microsoft windows operating system so different examples are microsoft windows linux disk operating system apple operating system all these are the examples of operating system without the operating system the computer cannot be started without the operating system the computer cannot be operated so it this is software that allows you to operate the hardware that is called as operating system so this is the function of the operating system the programs that we want to execute the programs we want to execute the applications that we want to use all require a platform so this platform is provided by the operating system that is called as os okay so this operating operating system gives a platform to run the programs to run the programs which you want to use like all the games all the movies you play this is possible only because of the operating system the windows operating system is the most common type of operating system that is used so there are menus icons and commands you can use to interact with the hardware so 
now print system is not a complex type but the working of the computer is complex inside thousands of processes are occurring thousands are of commands are running but because of the operating system we cannot understand the complexity of the process we understand how easy it is by clicking my computer double click on my computer is uh, requires thousands of processes thousands of commands but you have to just double click so all this work is done by the operating system next second is the utility programs so utility utility programs are bundled in the operating system nowadays examples include all these the other disk management tools whatever the disk management tools are there compression programs formatters defragmenters all these are the utility programs which come along with the operating system third language translators language translators are used where to translate the language from machine language okay we need to uh, translate we need to be translated in machine language there are three types of language one is machine language second is assembly language so assembly language should be converted into the machine language so that the machine can be understood so the, for this the language translators are required examples of uh, language translators are assembler compiler and interpreter you don't have to go the uh, deep into this just remember the names of this assembler compiler and interpreter next are the library programs or often called as dll digital dynamic link library dynamic link library so library programs are inbuilt programs that are often used to recall it so just like your library book you can uh, call any book you can uh, purchase any book from the library and return again to that library similarly the library programs are based on this so in a windows these are uh, they usually carry the extension dot dll any file which is uh, named as dot dll after the file name is called as library program it saves the function is it saves time while programming while programming you just have to call this file and it saves the time for typing all the commands instead of typing the whole command you just have to call this file that is the function of library programs next the application software these were the system software now the application software which the user use which the user use uh, are called as application software so first these are classified as the general purpose computer software general purpose software in this the software is for all the task lot of different task software is general purpose it can be used for a lot of different task okay that is called as general purpose software so example includes these are the examples of general purpose software so for word processing we use microsoft word word star word perfect chirator norton editor all these are for word processing for spreadsheet type we use ms excel symphony all these are different categories of general purpose software okay there are different categories of general purpose softwares in this data analysis word processing spreadsheet graphics and database software in that there are different packages or softwares included by different companies that is called as general purpose software next special purpose softwares so these are uh, designed for a special task or single task single task which is done by uh, companies like your railway reservation uh, movie reservation all this banking all these are special purpose software they do only one task or single task because this software performs a specific single task example 
payroll calculation, stock control, all these are single tasks. You can look at this example, payroll, billing, railway reservation, etc. All these are the examples of special purpose software. Okay. Last point is the firmware. Last point is the firmware. It is also a type of software. It is also a type of software which is in embedded or etched into a hardware device. Your keyboard, mouse, hard disk, BIOS and video cards. All the input devices, output devices are embedded in uh, are embedded in a software. The software is embedded in that hardware device. So without that software, your keyboard will not run. Unless you install that software, your keyboard will not run, your mouse will not run. So you have to install that software program in the computer. So this software program is called as firmware. Okay. Firmware is typically stored in a ROM, ROM type memory of the hardware device. We will see ROM and RAM in the third lecture. Okay. So it is stored in a ROM of a hardware device. It is read-only memory. It can be erased and rewritten. Uh, once any update can come, it can be erased and rewritten also. So that your uh, device can be work efficiently. As I told, without a firmware, a hardware device would be non-functional. Unless you install the keyboard software into the computer, the keyboard cannot run. Okay, you cannot use the keyboard. Unless you install this firmware, you cannot install run the keyboard. Okay. So these were the points that are covered in the first chapter. What were the points? Introduction to computers, definition of hardware, software and firmware and types of software. All these points we have covered in the first lecture. Okay. Next. Data representation. Data representation, binary and hexadecimal system, ASC double I code, ASC double I code, and Unicode. These are the two data encoding systems, character encoding systems. In statistics also data was there. Here also you have to uh, deal with a lot of data. In computers, data is very high. Data is very high. 128 GB, 1 TB, all these data are very high in the computer. Okay. So in computer, data refers to the symbols that represent people, events, things and ideas. In computer, data can refer to symbols that represent people, events, ideas and things. It can be a name, a person's name, it can be a number, it can be a photograph or color or the notes in musical composition. It can be notes in musical composition. Okay. So this can be a data. But the data representation in computer, if you want to enter a data, the data should be entered in a machine form, in the machine language. The machine language is a binary language. The machine language is a binary language which contains only zero and one, zeros and ones. So the data which we are entering is not a machine language. Okay, so it should be converted into the machine language. So devices are uh, such as smartphones, iPods, and computers. They store the data in digital form. That can be handled only by the electronic circuit. We cannot read the digital format by the human. Humans cannot read the digital format. So digitization is a process of converting the information such as text, numbers, photo, or music into digital data, into digital data that can be manipulated by electronic devices. So digitization is the process of converting the all the human language into machine language or digital data. 
that can be manipulated by electronic devices so this is the introduction of data next is the number system number system we use in our day to day life okay the number system we use in our day to day life uh saurabh matre how many uh, numbers are there in our number system single digit numbers how many single digit numbers are there in our number system which we use matre how many numbers are there single digit numbers are there in our number system which we use in our day to day life next dage shital dage how many number how many numbers are there single digit numbers are there in our number system 9 9 or 10 1 to 9 are single digit numbers okay 1 to 9 are single digit numbers and 0 is also included okay so there are 10 numbers in our number system there are 10 numbers in our number system which we use in our day to day life so they, this is a 10 digit number system which we use in our day to day life so basically number systems are classified into two types one is the non positional number system the non positional number system we uh, used in the statistic lecture today the non the non positional number system you will see now you can remember non positional number system and second is the positional number system so these are two types of number system one is non positional number system and second is positional number ऑडिबल आवाज येतोय का येतो सर हा ओके सो देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ नंबर सिस्टम फर्स्ट इज नॉन पोजिशनल नंबर सिस्टम सो फर्स्ट इज नॉन पोजिशनल नंबर सिस्टम इन व्हिच वी हैव यूज्ड सिंबल्स लाइक 1 फॉर 1 डबल वर्टिकल लाइन फॉर 2 Three vertical lines for three, four for four, and a uh, four slash for five. These are non-positional number systems. So if, mm-hmm. even if we change the position of these two lines, the value will be same. If we interchange uh, one line for another, the value of this digit will be same. So each symbol, this each line, each line will have same value one. Okay. so this is called as non positional number system it it doesn't depend on the position it doesn't depend on the position that is called as non positional number system okay so third second is uh, what is the limitations what are the limitations it uh, it is difficult to perform arithmetic operations there are different arithmetic operations like plus minus so it is difficult to perform arithmetic operations with the use of these numbers you cannot perform the arithmetic operations because numbers are too uh, large okay also you cannot use this system for high values otherwise the number will be uh, very large okay if uh, it is lakhs or millions 
you can uh, write one number for two pages okay so you cannot use this position you cannot use this number system for high value of numbers next positional number next is the positional number system so it involves a few symbols few symbols these are called as digits so our number system has 10 digits 0 to 9 okay these symbols represent different values 0 will have 0 value 1 will have 1 value 2 will have 2 value like these these digits have different values got it so there are four types actually there are many but we are covering four types of number systems positional number systems decimal binary octal and hexadecimal okay we will see one by one decimal binary octal and hexadecimal okay so first decimal decimal number system first is the decimal number system in which we use in our day to day life it has 10 symbols the decimal number system has 10 symbols or digits called 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so it has 10 symbols hence its base base means its base is 10 you don't write 10 to the base 10 or 12 to the base 10 but its base is 10 because it is a common system so you don't write the base but the base of decimal number system is 10 also the maximum value of a single digit you can see there are 10 digits the maximum value of single digit is 9 it is one less to the base value it is one less to the base value okay after that each position of a digit each position of a digit represents a specific power of the base 10 each position of the digit represents a specific power to the Based. We use this number system in our day to day. So third sentence, you will see numericals. It will happen uh, next week. So in the third sentence, you cannot understand unless you solve the numerical. You can see this is how a decimal number is written. We only write two five eight six. We don't write to the base ten. Two five eight six. We don't write normally. To the base ten, we only write two five eight six. So this number is written as two five eight six to the base ten. So it is calculated as two into ten raised to three, two into ten raised to three because it is thousands place plus five into ten raised to two because it is hundreds place eight into ten raised to one plus six into ten raised to zero. So it comes as two five eight six. Okay, so it is con uh, converted into decimal form again because it is in decimal form. So it is just elaborated. Two thousand plus five hundred plus eighty plus six. Okay, so this is a decimal number. This. next is the binary number system also it is a positional number system because we are studying positional number system it has only two symbols it has only two symbols by means two it has only two symbols or digits these are 0 and 1 Hence, its base is two. Hence, its base is two. The maximum value of a single digit is this one. It is one less than the value of base. Okay. Each position of a digit again it represents a specific power of the base. The format of writing this description is same in this decimal number system, binary and hexadecimal. Okay. This number system is used in computers. This binary number system is used in computers. Got it? 
so this example we are we will go to we will solve in next week okay because and uh, you don't understand the process you cannot solve this example okay next hexadecimal just remember this is a binary number this is how, this is how a binary number is 10101 to the base 10101 to the base 2 okay next hexadecimal number system hexadecimal number system so hexa means six hexa means six and decimal means 10 hexa means six and decimal means 10 so it has all the numbers or all the digits in decimal system 0 to 9 it includes numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so it includes all the numbers or digits from decimal system in addition it includes six alphabets hexa a b c d e f so it, it includes it has 16 digits 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and a b c d e f hence its space is 16 Hence, its base is 16. Also, the symbols A, B, C, D, E, F. The symbols A, B, C, D, E, F represent the decimal values. 10. After 9, A has 10 value. B has 11. C has 12. D has 30. E has 14. And F has 15. F has 15. So, the maximum value of Single digit is fifteen. The maximum value it can attain is fifteen because f value is fifteen. So the maximum value of a single digit is fifteen. One less than the base. One less than the base. Again, the same sentence is repeated. Each position of a digit represents a specific power to the base sixteen. Okay. So this is how a hexadecimal number is written. This is how a hexadecimal number is one a f sixty one a f to the base sixty. It is converted into a decimal system. So the conversion process we will do in the next week. Okay. Uh, one and a half chapter is over. Any problem in this? After that, any problem? Ah, ka? Nine six. अजुन को कमेंट बॉक्स मे टाका इफ एंड इफ देर इज एन प्रॉब्लम द कमेंट बॉक्स इज ओपन फॉर यू यू कैन टाइप इन द कमेंट बॉक्स ठीक है स्क्रीनशॉट घेतलेत का तानिया तू लास्ट काय लेतो हां काय लेतो रे एकच मिनिट हां